Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sanjay and in this video we're going to go through how to get started in investing in the share market. Now this is a question I often get from people, whether they're my friends or people on my Zoom calls where I chat with some of my clients on getting started in investing and they're saying, you know, I've got this money set aside or I'm thinking of getting started in investing. What do I do? What are the key steps? What are the things I need to consider? And this is where I'm going to share some of my initial thoughts on this. Now, this is obviously no substitute to getting financial advice from an actual financial advisor. And also you should consider speaking to a tax accountant. I find they're also quite handy when you start your investment journey. But these are just some of the steps that I would say you should consider and take along the way to make sure you're set up right. I'm also going to do another video down the track where I'll also share some of my mistakes that I made when I did my investment journey. Now that will be in a future one, but make sure you subscribe for that. So let's get into it. Now the first thing I often say to people when they're interested in investing in the share market is kind of reminding them, hey, you may not realize, but you may actually already be invested in the share market through your superannuation. And that's because for most people in Australia, they would have a superannuation account and they may not realize that it's often actually quite heavily invested in the share market. I mean, there's a reason why your superannuation grows faster than the amount of money you're putting into it. That's the investment returns you're getting. So as an example, let me show you where Australian Super, which is one of Australia's largest superannuation companies, has invested most of its balanced account. And most people, when they have an account with Australian Super, have a balanced account. This is like the default account. And you can see on their website, they'll show you the investment breakdown for this particular account. And you can see it's got 22% in Australian shares, 32% in international shares. So you can see right there, for every dollar you have in your superannuation account, if you're with Australian super, 55 cents would actually be in either the international or Australian share markets. So that's something to consider that you may not have realized is, hey, it's already pretty much invested in the share market. So what you're really asking me when you say, hey, I want to start investing in the share market is, how do I invest in addition to what I'm already doing through my superannuation account? So here are some key steps that I would say you need to consider. So the number one thing I think you need to have as soon as you start thinking about investing is you need to develop an emergency fund. Now, I know it's not exciting. I know it's not sexy. It's not the cool thing. But let me explain to you why an emergency fund is critical, incredibly important when it comes to investing in the share market. The most basic idea is because you don't want to be in a situation where you have to take money out of the Australian share market to pay for your everyday expenses or some kind of emergency that comes up like car registration, something's gone wrong with your car or a health event or whatever it is. You never want to be in the situation where you have to take money out of the share market to pay for that. And the reason for that is because in your investment journey, let's say it's 30 years, at some point your shares are going to be worth less than what you invested in them. And at that point, you don't want to have to be in a situation where you have to take your money out just so you have to pay for something on the side. So by having an emergency fund, which is like a form of cash on the side, you can pay for those emergency events without touching your share market money. Because my view is if you're going to start investing in the share market, you really should be looking to invest over 20, 30 years. I'm not the kind of guy who does the three to five year kind of investment turnarounds. You should check someone else for that stuff. But for me, I'm a big fan of 20 to 30 year long term investments, which means you really shouldn't be touching the money, which is another way of saying the money you're putting in, you shouldn't expect to touch for quite a few years. So make sure you have an emergency fund set aside to help you deal with some of those emergency events. Now, there's quite a lot of stuff on the Internet about what exactly you should put into your emergency fund, how much you should put into it. It can vary from three months expenses to three months of income to six months of expenses to six months of income. I've seen it all. And it does vary depending on do you have children? Do you have a partner? Do you have all of these things or are you a single person? All these things can have an impact on how much money you should set aside. I think the general idea for three months worth of income is if you're ever in a tough situation where you lose your job, it'll take you on average about three months to find a new role. And that's where you don't want to be in a situation where you have to take money out of the share market to pay for everyday expenses if you don't have income for three months, you've got money set aside. So that's the idea. So I'd say that's the most important thing. Start with setting up an emergency fund. So the next thing to consider is thinking ahead, setting some goals 
and reality checking what you want to achieve. So thinking ahead is this simple idea that when do you expect to take your money out of the share market? Hopefully, maybe it's never, you want to keep it in there for a quite a long period of time and you want it to compound over a long period of time. I get this question often where people will say, hey, I want to invest in the share market or I'm also thinking of putting money aside to, for a house deposit to buy a house. You know, how do I find the balance between the two? And I'll say, don't find the balance, just do one or the other, really. Like if you're going to be investing in the share market, you really need to have the view to be doing it for the next 20, 30 years. If you want to invest, if you want to put money aside to actually buy a house, that's also fine, but you shouldn't be investing in the share market expecting to then take that money out and put it into an actual house deposit. But just because, and let me explain before you attack me, you can't expect great returns in say a three to five year period. Okay, the share market might go sideways, it might go down, and you're risking your ability to buy a house on the performance of the share market. The other thing to consider is there can be capital gains taxes or there will be capital gains taxes on any gains you make. So just because you doubled your money, you're not getting all that money. You have to pay tax on some of it. So these are some of the things that I think you have to have a mature understanding of. Conceptually, it makes sense. Put some money into the share market, try and flip it, come out of it, and then buy, you know, put money towards a house deposit with it. It's a risky strategy, though, is what I would say. So if you want to buy a house, set the money aside, do that put the deposit away, do that. But if you're comfortable with not buying a house or that's not on your radar for a while, then go ahead, invest in the share market. That's what I mean by think ahead. Now, setting some goals is the second thing. This is where I would say, have a bit of thought around how much money you wanna be putting into the share market. Are we talking about $500 a month? Are we talking about $1,000 a month? Are we talking about $2,000 a month? Have a bit of an idea, because that does have an impact on how you can optimize your brokerage but also helps you budget things out a bit. And also helps you test out the next thing I wanted to say, which is the reality checking of what you want to achieve. So a lot of people start investing and they think they're going to become millionaires over time. So yes and no, you need to really think through the compounding effects, you need to test it out, you need to look at how long you're investing in over time. All these things need to be considered. And one way you can do that is using these compound interest calculators. Now, these compound interest calculators are very simple. All you basically do is say, if you want to invest $1,000 a month or $2,000 a month and you're expecting a certain amount of returns and you're starting from zero or you're starting from $10,000, whatever it is, over the next 20, 30 years, what will be your final portfolio position? How much money are we talking about at the end? And this is what I mean by reality checking is, you know, you can say, if I invest $500 a month or $1,000 a month over the next 20, 30 years, what's that final dollar number going to be like? And you have a bit of an idea of what you're planning towards. And this is also a great way of testing what happens if you wait 10 years. You know, if you start when you're 20 versus if you start when you're 30, you've lost 10 years worth of investing. But that's what I mean. Reality check, have an idea of what you're going to achieve by investing at a certain rate. Because it's good to set expectations in that way. And the third thing to consider is the platform you're going to use to invest or the brokerage company you're going to use to invest. I get a question about this pretty much all the time around, you know, which one's the best one? How do I ma minimize this or maximize that? All these kind of questions. So my view on this is quite, it's quite casual, I would actually say. I'm very casual about this in that it doesn't really matter what you start with. You What you need to know is a couple of things you should be looking out for is what are the transaction costs in terms of what's the brokerage costs? Is there some kind of flat fee they're always charging? Is it percentage based on how much you're investing? Another thing to consider is what are the inactivity costs? So some companies will charge you when you buy shares and they'll also charge you if you don't buy shares. So they'll have inactivity fees or things like that. The final thing to consider is what's involved in exiting that platform, meaning how difficult is it? Do you have to pay money to take money out of that platform to another platform? Because you will inevitably need to want to change your platforms. You'll say, I don't want to move, I want to move from ComSec to something else. I want to move from something else to ComSec. This is going to happen. So I would say something that you should have a mature understanding of is if I sign up to this particular platform, how easy is it for me to leave this platform? What's involved in terms of costs, paperwork, authorization, all of that, what's involved in shifting to another platform, okay? So these are some of the key things I would consider. Now, 
My preference in terms of brokerage, and this is not a recommendation, but my preference is for the larger ones. So I like the big bank ones. I know people are going to say, oh, good grief, he's recommending you get ripped off. But I personally, I just think these are reliable ones. They've been around for a while. I've been investing for like 15 years. So a lot of brokerages you see now haven't been around. So maybe that's on me for not doing new research. But, you know, I think you're not going to go wrong with a Comsec, an ANZE trade, a NAB trade, or a Westpac trade, whatever it is, any of the big four banks will have some kind of share investing platform. And if you have your banking set up with them, it's very easy to then set up your share trading platform as well with them. Vanguard has its own platform that's come out. I've heard good things about it. I haven't personally used it, but I've heard some good things about it. And on paper, some of it looks okay, but there are some interesting fee structures around it. Like there's a management fee for the total amount you're investing in on top of the management fee for the actual particular ETF you're investing in. So a couple of things to consider, but that's also out there. Now there's plenty of other people who have done videos on what platform to use, so I'll let you go to them, but you do need to pick a platform. And I would say, don't stress out too much on it because you can leave platforms and you can switch around. The other thing is you can actually test out platforms. So you don't have to pay money to join these platforms often. Their business model is based on transactions. So they rely on you having put money through them to actually make money. So often it's very easy and very cheap or very free to sign up to a lot of these platforms to get a feel for it, to see is it does it have what you want. So that's something to consider. Now, we're getting to the exciting thing. This is where you pick what you're actually going to buy in the share market. Now, this can get a bit tricky. You can feel a bit overwhelming. We'll address that in future videos and even in this one. But the idea is you can usually pick between buying shares, you can buy bonds, or you can buy ETFs. That's the broad kind of categories of things you can buy. Shares, very simple, very straightforward. What you're buying is ownership of a company that's listed on the Australian Stock Exchange. Okay, something to consider is when you buy shares, that money is not actually going to the company, right? A lot of these transactions are being done in the secondary market. It's basically ownership that's being shifted. So if you buy shares, and I'm selling shares, you could potentially be buying my ownership of a company off me at a certain price, higher or lower than what I bought it at, but that's what's happening. So by having ownership of a company, there are great things uh, you know, you can vote in certain things, you get access to any capital gains, you know, if the value of the company goes up over time, your ownership value will also go up over time. If it goes down, it goes down. If their company makes a profit and they want to pay out some of that profit to their shareholders like you, you can get some of that. That's what dividends are. So there are certain benefits to being an individual shareholder. Now, you can also buy bonds. This is not that frequently talked about on the Australian share market. I have done the odd video here or there, so you can check them out, link above. But the idea of bonds is it's like a fixed, well, it is a fixed interest, fixed income um, asset. And what you're essentially doing is buying a certain level of return on a face value. So it's like a company has said, hey, uh, we want to borrow a billion dollars and we're going to chop it up into the small parts and we'll pay you about 3% interest on our borrowing. And internally, they're expecting to make more than 3% return on that borrowing. So you can buy these corporate bonds. Same thing with government bonds are out there. You can also buy ETFs that do these things, but that's the general idea of buying bonds. It's like It's sort of like buying a term deposit where the value of the term deposit can go up and down, but you're also buying certain certainty in terms of returns coming from the issuer. Not a lot of talk about corporate or any kind of bond purchasing on the Australian share market. Most of the time, people are thinking about buying shares, but that is an option. Now, the other option, the third option, is buying ETS. Now, this is if you don't really want to get dabbled with having to invest in particular companies or picking which companies to invest in, you can choose to pick in the top 200, the top 300, and you just buy a basket of companies. The top companies in Australia, you just buy in one block. Okay, now that's straightforward. That's what ETFs essentially are. And I think that's a great way to get started. And I think some of the professional investors say that's a great way to get started. So it's a great way to get started. And there's a lot of now, there's a lot of ETFs out there that you can pick from. There are a lot of ETF issuers out there. Vanguard, BD Shares, iShares, Vanek, State Street, they're all there. So have a bit of a think around what you want, what you want to achieve. I probably should do a video on how to pick an ETF. I've done a few videos on ETFs. I'll probably link a playlist up above and you can have a look at all of these. But there's basically ETFs for Australia, there's ETFs outside of Australia. 
but I think this is, ETFs are a great way to basically get exposure to the share market. And you can totally have an entire life journey of investing in the share market through just ETFs. There is nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. There's none of this business around, oh, I should really start investing in individual companies. Or I should really start, like I'm not a real investor if I don't invest in real individual companies. That's not a thing. That's not a thing. It's totally okay to just invest in ETFs for the rest of your life. Totally fine. And that's it. That's that's actually it. Once you've picked a platform and actually invested in the share market, you have now started investing. Then you go back to step two where it's around your plan and you figure out how frequently do you want to invest. Do you want to invest every month, every couple of months, whatever it is, what are you trying to achieve there? There are some other points I'll just point out. I'll call this kind of maintenance topics. First is, what are you going to do with your dividends? Because at some point you can get paid dividends or distributions. What's your plan with them? Are you going to reinvest them back into the share market? Are you going to cash them out? What are you going to do there? So I've got some videos on that as well. Got videos on everything here. I've got videos on everything. The second thing you need to consider is at some point you're going to be asking about rebalancing portfolios because you're going to buy a certain amount of Australian shares, you're going to buy a certain amount of international shares, and that proportional balance, you know, between 40 and 60% might change to 70 and 30%. And you'll be asking me or you'll be asking your friends, should I like sell some and buy some of the other? Or how do I like rebalance this? What's the best balance allocation? How many ETFs should I have? Those are all topics I'll cover in future videos, but there are other people out there who have done it. You can Google on it. But the idea there you're talking about is portfolio allocation and portfolio rebalancing. The other thing that I think you should definitely have an eye on is tax. Okay, this is both capital gains tax and income tax. So you're going to make money on the share market. Yeah, believe it or not, you actually will. But when you do, you need to know how to make sure you appropriately get taxed on it. So this is where it does pay, like I said at the start, make sure you have a good accountant or you have a good relationship with your accountant and they know you're investing in the share market and they know you're buying and maybe selling in it as well and they can help you, you know, set your finances up in a way. Because the first thing is you'll start paying tax and then inevitably you'll be thinking about how do I reduce my tax exposure without breaking any laws. You know, that's going to come up. So you're going to be looking at different ways of doing that. So make sure you have a good relationship with an accountant that you can discuss some of those topics with. And that's how you get started investing. You get your emergency fund running, you set some goals, pick a platform, pick what you're going to buy, and then just buy, and then manage that account over time. And if you need to jump around on platforms, you can do that. If you need to reallocate your portfolio, you can do that. These are all things that you can do along the way. Now, if you want some references, you can check out the Money Smart website. This is a website by the Australian government. Great resource to consider and have a look at. Very useful, very comprehensive. Have a look at that. Now, if you want to sign up to my newsletter, I send out a weekly newsletter on topics around investing, finance, and updates on my videos and podcasts that I'm listening to. You can check out the link here below. I'll make sure I leave a link there or in the description. You can sign up to that. If you also want to have a chat with me through Zoom or Skype, or you just want to have a chat about some of your investment thoughts or ideas, obviously I can't give advice, but if you need a bit of a sounding board, feel free to set up some time through my link on Calendly. We can have a bit of a chat there. And if you want to check out some of my other videos, make sure you check out the links here and like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. And I'll see you in the next video, which will be on the whole topic of some mistakes that I've made. Once you've started, let me tell you some of the mistakes I've made that you can hopefully avoid. See you in the next video. Bye for now.